Hey guys, Holden here. It's seven o'clock once again. So everybody join me tonight. We're going to talk about, I want to cover cam lift and duration and lobe separation angle. I'm not going to get too technical on this. I just want people to understand when they're talking about cam shafts, what of those three things is really the most important when you're having a conversation with somebody or, <laughs> and this is the case for my conversation, when you're asking me about camshafts or what camshafts to use for your combination when you're calling in and saying, hey, are you emailing me or, or, or in our live chat or something and saying, hey, Richard, what cam should I use? Or I have this cam and it's this lift. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't really tell me enough. And that's that's another part of this is we're talking about cam lift and duration in LSA. And obviously, when we're trying to answer anything, the more information I have, the better off everything is because I'm more able to give you a qualified answer. A lot of times it's just going to be, hey, <laughs> you need to put a thousand horsepower turbo on there or you need to put any turbo on there and all of them work. So, you know, everything will work out just fine. But so let's talk about uh, Leroy's in the house. Yes, more more of all of those is better, right? Except for LSA. I don't think you always want more LSA, but more lift is good and more more duration is better. But when you're when we're talking about or when you're talking about a camshaft, if you are talking to somebody else about a camshaft and giving them information on that cam, the first thing that you want to talk to them about is duration. And the reason for that is I know everyone says, Oh, I've got a 600 lift cam. The problem with that is that it doesn't really tell you anything. All it tells you is how high you've lifted the valve. And that may or may not be a quote unquote big cam because the problem is if you take a 600 lift cam that's only 190 degrees of duration, all that is is a high lift stock cam. And it's really not going to make very much power. It's certainly not going to make any power at a higher RPM. And that's kind of where you're going to make power. So if we if we look at a typical 4.8 or 5.3 or 6 liter, 6.2, any of the LS families or any engine family, it doesn't matter what kind of engine family it is. But if we put a camshaft in it and we add duration to that camshaft, we go from 190 or 200, whatever it is stock, and we put something in that's 210 or 220 or 230, that's a step up in cam size. And for me, the first thing that I look at is, intake duration on any camshaft. For me, that's what determines how big the camshaft is. So if you put a 600 lift camshaft in, as I said, and it still has stock duration numbers, it's basically going to make a little bit more than stock and it's going to do it in the same RPM. There are instances, obviously all of these things are interrelated. So our, there are instances where if we add lift, we do get good power, get good power gains. And there are instances that if we do add lift, that we get changes in the RPM range that the thing will make power. But <laughs> lift by itself is not what I consider what determines whether or not a cam shaft is bigger or more aggressive. It's usually the intake duration. So if we're talking about, if you take a look at the video that I posted recently on the 6.2 liter modifications, it shows you what you what happens when you modify your 6.2 liter. One of the things that I did is we add, we ran bigger cams. So we ran a stock LS3 cam, then we ran a 224 intake cam, a 227 and a 231. And as we went generally bigger in the camshaft, uh, all of these had similar lift numbers, but they all had higher uh, intake duration numbers and higher exhaust duration numbers. And the duration numbers are kind of what shifts the power curve up higher in the RPM range. And I say that <laughs> and people, people want black and white answers to gray questions because the problem is, the lobe separation angle can also help determine where this thing wants to make power. For instance, if we put together a blower cam like an LS9 um, or any of these positive displacement blower cams that a lot of people offer, if we have a wide lobe separation angle, that will also tend to push power production higher in the RPM range at the expense of low speed power. And duration can do the same thing. If you put a 230 intake duration cam in in place of your stock one, it's probably not going to make the same power down low. Now, the nice thing about upgrading an LS cam is that a lot of times, and we saw this on the LS3, the 224 cam, the 227 cam, and the 231 cam all made more power than the stock cam did at every RPM range that we tested it. And I think we tested it down around down around 3000 RPM. And even if we tested that down at 2000 RPM, like guys want me to do, um, I think we would still see the same thing. I don't think any of those on, on the LS3, there's enough displacement that it can take advantage of a lot more camshaft. Basically that LS3 has 
a lot going for it. It has compression, it has lots of plenty of displacement, and it has lots of head flow, and it also has a very good intake manifold. So it really, really wants even more than the other uh, motors or, or the other displacements and stuff in the LS family. It really wants camshaft. So if you put a camshaft in an LS3 motor, it's going to really pick up even down low, kind of basically through all, all the way through the curve, which is why I did those tests to show you what happens when you go up to bigger and bigger camshafts. And we went up to somewhere, getting somewhere near the limit of where available piston to valve clearance is. So duration for me is, is the thing and, and more specifically intake duration, because we can make big changes in exhaust duration. And, and not have a big effect on power. And I showed that when we did the test comparing the, the comp 54-459-11 cam to the 469 cam. And really the only difference between those two was we changed the exhaust duration from 239 to 247 or 247 or 248. I think it's 247. Um, but we went up a big jump in exhaust duration. But it didn't have a huge effect on power. Now, if we go up seven degrees in intake duration, you're going to change the power. But it, it shifted the power a little bit at the very top and a little bit at the very bottom. But there wasn't a big difference in cam timing there. So if somebody, if you're coming in to ask me a question or talking to your cam guy or talking to your buddies or you're talking online in a group chat or whatever you're doing, when you're talking about camshafts, <laughs> you should talk about duration first and then lift and then lobe separation angle. And then if you're talking to any of the guys that want, want to sell you cams, they're going to want to talk to you about cam events and valve events, opening and closing points and all of that stuff. But the problem that I see, and, and, and this is, I, I've had this conversation with a lot of the cam guys, um, they want to try to teach the public valve events. And the problem with that is the public uh, is not, the vast majority of the public is not at, in a position to understand valve events. Because we all have to understand, uh, you know, when we were taking math in school, I took pre-algebra and then algebra and then geometry and algebra two and trig and, and calculus and stuff. So that's how the succession goes. I couldn't take, I couldn't do calculus equations before I took all these other things. And it's the same thing with most people out there. And, and I, trust me, I'm, I'm one of them, that if you're trying to talk to them about valve events, it's just no benefit to anybody. It's, it, it is benefit to a small number of people, but it's not a benefit to most people because they don't understand that if you have an opening point here and a closing point here, they don't know what that means. But what people do mean and what they do understand is 230 degrees is a bigger cam than 220 degrees. And 600 lift is more than 550 lift. <laughs> and we can teach them about lobe separation that obviously 120 degrees is a wider lobe separation angle than 110. And we can kind of teach them what effect that has. So let's learn the basic stuff. And as soon as you understand that very well, then you can start correlating that with valve events. And once you start understanding valve events, then you can talk to everybody and sound like a genius and, <laughs> and help fewer and fewer people, in my opinion. So uh, I, I'm working on a video right now, and that will go up tonight as soon as I'm done with this. I've compared a 5.4 liter four valve modular Ford motor, both NA and turbocharged, to a 5.3 liter LS motor, both of them are modified, both of them are turbocharged, both of them run at the same boost level. So that will kind of be an interesting, fun comparison. And, and you know, everybody can argue about, uh, oh, this one's better and this one costs $7 and this one costs $19,000. You know, everybody's going to argue about all the stuff that they're going to argue about. But I just thought it was kind of cool. What I'm trying to illustrate is there are, there are many, many ways for guys to make more power and also demonstrate how easy basically it is to make a thousand horsepower anymore. And you can do that with either one of those combinations and really lots and lots of different combinations. You can do it with a small block Chevy, small block Ford, although I don't know if you could do that with a five liter Ford, but definitely a 351 Windsor. Or, or a Dodge too, although I haven't tried it on a Dodge yet. So that's going to be an interesting video. So that will go up and you guys will get to take a look at that. So we've got some cool stuff coming. Let's get over to our questions because I've got, uh, don't have a lot of time tonight. I've got about 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to scroll back here and see if I can get some uh, questions here.
Gunther Gregg, do new school cam designers just spec out where they want the valve events to happen and then figure out LSA? Yeah, if you talk to uh, Brian Tooley or, or um, Steve over at Cam Motion or Billy at Comp or anybody that's uh, that understands cams at that level, that's what they do. But like I said, I don't agree with them trying to talk to customers about valve events. That's like trying to teach somebody, like I said, it's trying to teach somebody calculus that doesn't understand all of the other things that have to happen before we understand calculus. It's not, I, that's not good marketing in my opinion. And I've told them all that, that if you're trying to talk to somebody, you need to talk to customers in a way that they understand that a, a really good teacher doesn't teach at their level. They teach at the level of the people that they're trying to, that are trying to learn. And that's very, very important. I, I had, uh, there were teachers when I was growing up that, that, people were taking and that were geniuses. I mean, they, they were people, the, like the trig and calculus teacher, he actually got barred from, from uh, Vegas because he was super smart and he was a card counter, but he wasn't a very good teacher or he wasn't effective at a, as the other teacher was who knew how to teach us because we weren't that smart yet. So, you know, teaching at the level of the people that want to learn is very, very important. And that's why valve events to me are not the way to go until they can understand what lift is and what it does, what duration is and what it does and what LSA is and what it does. And then you can backtrack and go, okay, here's how those things come about. Burning rubber needs a 210-ish truck cam on a 108. Yeah, that would be pretty tight. Um, and that's probably a low enough duration where the idle wouldn't be terrible on a 108 because that's the thing that happens when we tighten the LSA up. We tend to hurt idle quality, but it does tend to enhance power production, especially in the range where a truck cam is going to want to go. Uh, Vincent wants to know if I have an email address. Yes, I, I, I'll put it at the end of this. And if you, if you take a look at the channel, um, that the email address should be on the, the channel description, but I'll put it at the end of this or, or at the channel description for this video also after we're done. Brandon wants to know, do aggressive low lift cams have a purpose or is there no reason to go to high lift cams 625 in the Gen 3 4.853 with 706 heads? Uh, as long as the head continues to flow, which these do, so 5, 590, 600 lift stuff is fine. The problem with going to a real high lift and a low duration, like especially like the one I was talking about, if you had a, if you had a 600 lift, 190 degree duration, it would be a really, really aggressive ramp rate. <laughs> Cause that's the nice thing about what, about having more duration. It, it, you can soften the ramp rate up. And the thing is a lot of people don't realize also that I wanted to mention, and I forgot to mention when we were talking about those cams is, uh, and I get this question all the time about piston to valve clearance. They say, well, what's the, what's the biggest lift I can put on a cam and still not, and still not have the valve hit the piston. Well, the, the lift isn't the thing that causes piston to valve clearance. It's actually duration. So it's not how, it's not how far you're opening the valve. That's not what's make it, that, that's not what's going to make it hit the piston. See, the valve goes down as the piston's coming up. So the longer it hangs down there, the more chance you have of it hitting. And it's only going to hit in, in one particular spot when the piston and the valve are coming up and going down at, at the right position. So that's the thing to be concerned about. And, and it's primarily with an LS, it's primarily intake duration. You can get away with a lot of exhaust duration. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Like I said, we've run, you know, you're, you're looking at the two... 32 or 233 degree duration on the intake side of most LS stuff, but you can go to 248 or so on the exhaust and it still works fine. John wants to know, will a Gen 4 5.3 block hold a thousand plus without coming apart? Have you not, John, have you not seen any of the big bang stuff? Um, I, a, a Gen 4 combination is the 6 liter that we ran, but a 5.3 would be the same thing. You can even do that on a 5.3 aluminum block. You can, we made 1,500 plus horsepower with those. So yeah, 1,000 horsepower is not a problem. With that 6 liter, we probably have 100 runs at 1,000 horsepower. So it's, that's not a problem. 
Gunther says my new cams are 116 degree LSA and still choppy. Yeah, but what duration are they? Are they are really high duration? If they're not, then you probably have <laughs> some other kind of vacuum leak or something. Adriana wants to know, hi, Richard, I have a 496 10.7 AFR 265 headed uh, a 108, 634 lift, I'm assuming 230 at 50. Uh, so that's going to be, that's going to be, that's a decent camshaft. 230 is not real big for a 496. And he wants to try a pro charger. Um, yeah, you could, you could run that camshaft. I, if it's a 496, I would have a bigger cam in it than that. The cam that I always put in a 496 is that comp BR 300, 300 BR 14. It's a 255, 262 at 50. And it's only like 650 lift. And it works real well. We've run it with turbos and blowers and NA and nitrous and all kinds of stuff. It's basically the equivalent for me of the Extreme Energy 274 cam that I run in all the Ford stuff. Tori wants to know, Tori 2. Uh, would you recommend bothering with a 254, 254? Oh, that's advertised duration. Okay. I was going to say that's going to be a pretty healthy camshaft. A 202 at 50 is, is kind of like the Brian Tooley uh, torque cam. 435 lift. Um, TT500 spec cam that requires cambridge clearancing and high lift springs. Is this on a four valve motor then that you're asking about? Um, 202 at 50 still seems pretty small to me. And then whether if that's a four valve cam, even if it's a four valve cam, that seems that seems kind of small to me. You could you could make a lot more power with more cam timing than that. David wants to know in regards to my question about the Crower cam and my stroke for six. Uh, four valve, can you spend some time on that topic? I don't I don't know what your question was. I didn't maybe I didn't read it beforehand. Gunther says he'd like to see <laughs> cams come with a, with cam curves that are with a standardized engine. That would be interesting, but that's what that's why I do all this stuff so you guys can see what these cams make. I need to get come on. I need my cam to focus. I need my my uh, camera to focus. What's going on? I'm out of focus. Come on, Guillermo. I'm building a stock LQ9 board 30 over, putting a truck 243 head TSP 228 cam. Cam 600 lift and 110 LSA. See, that's, oh, oh if it's a, I'm, I'm assuming the 228 cam is 228 degrees, 228 degrees of duration. You, you shouldn't have a problem with that cam. A 228 should fit fine. Fast Hippo, you have a 230, 251 a duration cam 646 637 with a 118 degree lsa that's a pretty wide lsa so that 230 intake should fit and even the 251 should fit with a wide lsa because the widening the lsa actually improves piston to valve clearance um i'm curious why you would go with the 646 637 lift uh i i wonder what head that is i, I i'm hoping that that's maybe an ls7 Trevor wants to know if there's a sound difference between more and less LSA. Well, there definitely is at idle. And yes, I think that the sound difference will be, uh, there will be a sound difference between the LSA because you you primarily hear um, more, more exhaust duration tends to change sound quality on the exhaust. Jody wants to know, is, there every, is every cam also a supercharger cam or just turbo? No, you can run them with blowers as well. As a matter of fact, on a supercharger, whether it's a positive displacement supercharger or a centrifugal, a centrifugal supercharger cam is almost an NA cam already, if you look at the specs. And, and for a positive displacement blower cam, I'd actually pick a, um, I would pick a, an NA cam over the wide LSA stuff that they do that tends to help power out at the top and have less power in the middle part. I say, let's have as much power in the middle part, because that's where you're going to spend more time there than you are at the peak. 
That's a good question. Uh, FMS Racing 442, is there a duration to RPM formula? That would be nice, but then you'd also have to factor in a, 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 the, the displacement because the displacement affects RPM too, even at the same duration. Like if you put the same duration on a 4.8, it's going to make peak power at a different RPM than a 5.3 or a 6 liter is, assuming that they all had the same other things, the cylinder head and intake manifold. John D, are shorter exhaust duration better on turbo motors? I, I haven't found that. Um, some guys run single pattern cams. They even run reverse splits on turbo stuff. And I just haven't seen that work. Now, maybe guys have done more testing than I have on that. Like I said, I, I'm, I kind of like the fact that when I run a camshaft and compare it, that the camshaft that makes more power NA, it also does that under boost. And there may be a point at which that doesn't happen anymore and I haven't seen any data from anybody, all the people that I've talked to, where that's the case, except maybe on extreme applications. Um, like, you know, if I went to talk to Kenny Duttweiler and said, hey, Kenny, when you're doing these 3,000 horsepower motors, what cam timing do you use? And then whatever he uses, I would trust that that works because he knows how to make power. And I'm not going to tell him my theories about that stuff because I, you know, I would be talking to Kenny Duttweiler and I wouldn't do that. basic hate. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the BTR stage two cam in a six liter LQ nine with an 80 millimeter turbo summit pistons gap 318 heads. I'm thinking you're thinking 317 heads truck intake, Holly Terminator. Will it make a thousand horsepower? Yeah. an 80 millimeter turbo will certainly do that. I'm hoping that you also have a, an intercooler and the, an 80 millimeter turbo will certainly support that. And all the rest of the stuff is fine. That, that will certainly make that. <laughs> it's either Brianne or Brian. <laughs> Cam should be matched to what heads can flow. You should be able to get a head flow chart from whoever did your heads and use that information to get the performance out of your cam. The problem with trying to team your camshaft to cylinder heads is I don't think that that works as well as people think. I think if just because you have a head that flows best at 650 lift instead of 600 lift doesn't necessarily mean that you should have a 650 lift camshaft. Um, I, I would disagree with that because I, I don't, I think that gives us an idea. Um, and again, it depends on whether or not for most of these guys, that are doing an LS, they're not trying to do max effort NA combinations where they're trying to get everything out of the NA combination. Because again, if we have a thousand horsepower turbo, we don't have to get every last little bit, every last little horsepower out of the NA combination before we add boost. We just have to get somewhere near 400 or 500 horsepower and then turbo will do the rest. It's very easy. Tucker wants to know, is the LSA, that is it what makes the chop chops <laughs> sound from the cam? It's a combination of things, um, but the LSA, if you tighten it, you'll get more chop if that's what you're asking about. If you add duration, you'll get more chop. If you add overlap, you'll get more chop. Um, all of those things will affect it. Jack wants to know, will you do a video of the M113? I think you mean M M112? Oh, oh M113 V8, the single overcan 24. Single overhead cam, 24 valve motors. I, I've never run one of those, so I don't. And again, it's always a problem of getting it hooked up on the dyno. Vans 1107, have you ever tested two cams, one with more intake lift than exhaust lift and vice versa, where, where they're all, all the same? I have done a reverse pattern cam versus a standard pattern cam, and the reverse pattern cam made less power than the standard pattern cam. I only tested it NA. I didn't do it with the turbo. Um, and here, here's the problem with doing that test. So how do I do that test? 
do I do a, uh, like if I pick a camshaft, the, a standard, you know, dual pattern camshaft that is a 224, 232. And then I reverse that. Do I now make it a 220, uh, 232, 224? Or do I, how, how do I adjust the duration to get that to be a fair test? Because if I do a 224, 232 and compare that to a 232, 224, that's not really going to be a good test. I need to, in my opinion, I need to have the intake duration the same and then adjust the exhaust. So I need to have a 224, 232, and then a 224, and maybe a 220 or something. So let me know what you guys think about that. It, it would be, and that's the thing that we've always gone through when doing that kind of test. It's hard to figure out what exactly you would, what two cams you would actually compare to figure out whether or not that works. At 351, Stephen wants to know a 351 Cleveland 4V M code split duration. I would use a split duration cam, although I think the one that we ran in ours might have been a single pattern. We just picked a shelf cam because comp had it. But I, I like I like dual pattern cams. And since the intake flows so well on the intake, typically guys say if you have lots of you know intake flow, then you want to improve the exhaust and you do that with extra exhaust duration. So more of a split pattern cam. Oh, Fast Hippo wants to know if that cam that we described, the 23251 was good for an LSA uh, blower. Yeah, the 118 makes that thing a blower cam. That's going to be a good size blower cam. And, and on the LSA, you probably would want to try to maximize the power output of the NA motor. Um, I think that's a, that's a big spread between the two, although guys are doing that. I, I haven't tested one, I don't think with 20 degrees of spread between the intake and the exhaust, but it's such a wide LSA that it's going to be, what's going to happen with that is it's going to be soft down low and it's going to want to make power at the very top. And maybe what that's what they were trying to do with that blower cam. Um, for me, I wouldn't pick that cam if it was my blower motor, unless I was trying to drag race it and, and I was modding the blower, I was going to pour it and put the smallest pulley I could and do all of that. Then I might pick that cam. Otherwise I would just pick uh, more of a, if I was going to do a 230, you know, I, I would pick something more like that 469 cam, or there are lots of other ones from Texas speed and, and cam motion and BTR and everybody else. I, I wouldn't pick a blower specific cam for that combination. I'd pick an NA cam. I think, I just think it'll make more average power. 227, 241 at 50, 109 LSA. Can I run dome pistons? Well, if you're going to run a dome piston on a 4.8, it's going to have a valve relief in it anyway. So if you have a valve relief, you shouldn't have a piston to valve clearance problem. Thoughts on a 235 intake duration 4.8 turbo combo? If you have a, an aftermarket uh, piston in there, it probably work. Otherwise, 235 is you're in the danger zone. You'll definitely have to measure it to find out whether or not it's going to work. Uh, Nick Steiger, you've, you've seen a few 406 small block Chevys, one that had a 260, one that had a 292, and they seem to make the same power. It, it's, and this is why I don't ever do it. I don't ever compare. What's going on with my camera here? Come on, come on, jump back in here. Um, I don't ever compare stuff on different motors, on different dynos, on different days. Um, a 292 cam will make more power than a 270 cam, especially on a 406 inch motor. It's a, that's a really good combination for a bigger camshaft and it should like it. If the head is stock and the, the, the head is holding things back, um, even then a 292 should make more power than a 270, at least at the top. Supervet wants to know, would you go with a 799 or 862 head for an NA engine? I don't know what size engine that you're talking about. For a 5.3, I would go with a, um, always with a 706 head. Do all rectangular port heads want big cams? No, we've run, I, I ran the BTR stage one, two, and three truck cams on a six liter LY6 with um, rec port heads and they work just fine. 
Yes, I'm Joe. I'm still building the Nova, but I haven't gone down to West Tech to put the engine in and stuff. <laughs> Is there a book you recommend for people that want to learn cam calculus? I would have to learn it first and, the, and read that book before I... I'm going to try to zoom out and zoom in. There we go. That's better. Tenor Haller, Haller Monkey wants to know if a cylinder head flow is best at 500 lift, would it be best to have a cam with 500 lift? The logical answer would be yes, but I've seen many, many combinations where the flow stalls at some lift range and we run camshafts that go beyond that lift range because you're talking about um, average lift when you're making power, not just the peak lift. So I think that that's not always true. The wavy Eli does a stage four cam actually eat up a ton more fuel than a stage two. Um, are you? It, it would depend on when you're talking, but you got to be very specific about your question. Does it use more fuel under cruise? Does it use more fuel at wide open throttle? Um, if it's making more power, it will use more fuel at wide open throttle because a stage four cam will probably have worse idle characteristics and not drive as well, and would probably require a different stall speed on the converter. Um, I would tend to think, yes, it will use more fuel than a stage two. I, for a daily driver, I would never use a stage four cam in anything, not, in a, not even in a six liter. Why do triple 12 cams work good or am I mistaken from JFR Racing? I've never tested the triple 12. I, I'm not familiar with it. I, I would have to look at the specs and see. I have one of JFR cams and I, and I used it on the, the uh, sloppy stage two test and ran it with a turbo and stuff. And it worked good. It, it, it did exactly what we thought it would do. I mean, it did stuff that was really similar to all the other cams that we tested that had similar lift and duration numbers because that's what they do. There's not, there's not a magic thing. You know, they, it doesn't matter where it comes from. The, you can only, you have a certain number of <laughs> lift and duration configurations that you can run. And they're all, and that they're all going to be similar. Paul wants to know, I have a 76 F100. I'm swapping a 400 modified, 400M, yeah, the modified motor. And I'm running two turbos. What cam should I run? Seven pounds of boost, eight to one compression, and four V heads with a custom EFI intake. Um, I would run, uh, obviously, if you're only running seven pounds of boost, you're looking for some kind of mild combination. Although that, a 400 with four V heads can make a lot of power. Um, I would put something that's going to be like a, that's a 400. I would say if you want to go mild, put something like a 224, 232. And if you want to step things up just a little bit, I think that that cam would probably work better with the eight to one compression to get some more snap down low, but then a, like a 230, 236 kind of thing. I see a lot of your, I see a lot of your mild cam tests show improvements everywhere over stock. And what cam size do you typically see that low end under 3000 RPM drop off? Um, I haven't done a lot of tests where we've run from 2000 on up. Um, I would need to do more of that to find out actually when that is happening um, to give you a, an honest answer about that. A lot of the cams uh, I know that are in the, stock duration range, um, 208 to 210, let's say, um, anything beyond that. Uh, I know that a 224 cam is going to lose power down there. Uh, I don't know if a 218 will, I, I would suspect that it would, especially at 2000. I just don't know how much it is. Would you bat, would you bother with camming a Vortec V3 Navigator 5.4? Um, yeah, I think you'll definitely pick up power from the stock cams are really, really mild on those motors. But since it's a four valve cam, I mean, since it's a four valve motor, you could also do, you could also adjust the cams, which I would definitely recommend doing because when, whenever we've tested any modular Ford motor, especially the four valve stuff, 
the the um, valve events from <laughs> one side of the motor to the other were usually off, and sometimes by a lot, sometimes by six or seven degrees. So let's get down here a little bit more. Mike wants to know if I've ever tested the old Chevy firing order on an LS. I haven't. And the, the guys from Chevrolet for GM went with the firing order on the LS for, uh, to remove vibration in the motor, not, not specifically for power. So I don't think we would see a lot. And we've done some altered uh, firing order stuff for big blocks, the four seven swap and stuff. And I don't, I don't think the firing order makes that much of a difference. I think what you'll see and what they're looking for is, um, you know, longevity. Phase two, would you use a solid roller on a weekend driver car? Um, I would use a solid roller on a big block uh, or something like that, but I wouldn't use one on an LS judging by how much power guys can make with hydraulic roller stuff. And it's just so easy and the, there's no maintenance on it. So, I, I mean, there might be maintenance if you're running an 800 lift one or a 900 lift one, <laughs> that would be something else. get down here too. Let's get down here a little bit lower. <laughs> Sparky Moto, you're planning on swapping a V12 into your Nova. What V12 is it? Is it a Jaguar? Is it a BMW? What is it? A Ferrari V12? Okay, here's a good question. What do you think of a 284-296 at 50? That's a big cam. 430 inch Windsor with trick flow twisted wedge 225 R's. They flow, they flow 356. Will it run on E85? You're shooting for 800 horsepower. Um, 800 horsepower is going to be that's going to be pretty good. That's you're going to have to spin that thing up. You got a lot of camshaft. The 356 CFM on the head is what concerns me for the 800 horsepower, but. That's, that might be possible. You're going to have to have everything else. You're going to have lots and lots of compression and the right intake manifold and maybe a dry sump and all that stuff to get that number. If you have high turbo back pressure, is it generally a bad idea to have a tight LSA? I, I actually haven't done that kind of testing to find out. Um, I don't like high back pressure. Uh, for me, the back pressure is not an indication of camshaft. It's an indication that you have the wrong size hot side and you've combined that with the, with the wrong displace, displacement and or power output of the NA motor. And I would adjust that. I, I don't know that you can adjust back pressure nearly as much with cam timing. We'd like to see a few more tests of a PD blower cam versus what would be considered an NA cam. I have those up. I have, I've already run uh, the blower cams versus NA cams. I ran that 224 crane cam versus a PD blower cam from LGMS or Brian Tooley. We ran it on a supercharged, I think it was on the LSX crate motor from GM. And we did that comparison. And the NA cam makes more power through most of the curve. The bigger PD blower cam made more power at the top. It did that NA and it did that under boost. It did exactly the same thing. Again, there's not, there's not magic. What, the, what they do NA, it will give you a really good idea what they're going to do under boost. Vans wants to know, do you always run roller rockers with aftermarket LS heads with bronze valve guides? It's a good idea. Um, we don't do it because we're running stuff on the engine dyno and, it, and our runs are so short that we're not going to wear a guide out. So that's, that's less of an issue for us. And a lot of the stuff that I run, the majority of it, is uh, junkyard stuff. And it comes with a factory head and it has a powdered metal guide in it, which is kind of the way to go. Uh, Frank, we went over my thoughts on single pattern cams. I like dual pattern cams, although I really do like that single pattern uh, torque cam. So I kind of want to test some more of those for low speed power stuff. 
Tahoe Jones is a 243 head any good? Yes, it's very good. I ask everybody in the LS community and they'll tell you that that's the best factory head ever made. <laughs> Do I have, see now this is a good question. <laughs> Crank and wagon, any videos of your sprint three cylinder turbo? I have not put any up cause I'm looking for the photos and stuff. And unfortunately when both of my laptop and my desktop computer, when the, um, I lost the hard drives on them, I lost a lot of data, a lot of videos, a lot of photos and stuff. And I'm still trying to recover some of that stuff. And if I can find sprint stuff, I want to do some sprint stuff because I did a lot of really cool stuff with it. Um, I did an air to water intercooler on it. We did, you know, vein meter clicks. I did exhaust tests on it. I did different turbos on it. I did a different uh, bypass valve. I mean, I did a lot of cool stuff and I did a lot of cool things. I also did injector spray patterns and I did some things because we were, I, I used to commute with that car. So in addition to, you know, wanting to make more power, obviously the other thing I was looking to do was improve fuel mileage. So we would do things, you know, all the things that people would do, we would jack the tire pressure up. I lowered the car. We cut the springs. Actually, we didn't cut the springs. And we did this out at one of the races is we actually used just like hose clamps because the springs were so weak on this thing. Cause this thing only weighed about 1700 pounds the springs were so soft on it that we could put hose clamps on it and we could tighten the hose clamps and we can use them as spring compressors. So that worked really good to lower the car. What is better for torque, a 400M or a budget 460? I think a 460 would be better just because it's bigger. If you have the motor bigger, it, it's going to make more low speed power. Have you done any videos on degreeing cams on the Ellis motor? I have not. Normally I don't degree them because I don't ever put together like race combinations. We put the, put the cam in and then just line up the dots and, and put them in and run them. Kevin wants to know if I'm trying to hit 500 wheel horsepower. Um, what size motor are you trying to hit that with? Yeah, 600 horsepower will give you a really good indication that you're at 500 wheel horsepower. I don't know what you're trying to do that with a turbo or, or NA six liter or something. Oh, see, there he goes. E German, a Hayabusa turbo swap. <laughs> I, I've seen guys run when I was, I've been out to Bonneville a bunch and, and watching the guys run turbo Hayabusa's out there. I don't know where those guys put their balls at because they they have to be really, really big to ride those things. I mean, those guys are going, I think they're going 250 or 260 on those things. It's nuts. Would a Brett wants to know what a turbo cam benefit a high compression turbo Honda B series. Uh, if the cam benefits the, a turbo cam might benefit um, over a stock cam because the turbo cam would probably make more power than the stock cam does, even NA. So you would get gains from that. But I wouldn't pick turbo grinds for an NA combination if that's what you have. Not not on the B series anyway, just because they make them they're they're milder cams generally. Is it worth the extra time degreeing the 5.4 cams? It's it takes a um it takes a fair bit of time. It's a, it's real time consuming. It was really easy with the motor out of the car. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't do it with the motor in the car. I would look for other ways to get more power. When choosing a towing cam, do you want peak torque at the at the RPM most used. Yeah, you could do it that way. Um, most people want, most people want torque production, not just peak torque. They want torque production in the RPM range that they're running. And for a truck, I know with, with my truck, it never sees more than 5,500 RPM. And it very rarely does it even see that it spends most of its time in the you know, 2000 to 3,500 RPM range. Cause it's just cruising down the road unless it, you know, unless I, downshift or tow something with it, then in that RPM range is where I would want most, most extra torque production. The problem is, especially with a camshaft or something, it's really hard to get extra torque there. It's easy to get with compression helps and displacement definitely helps, but it's hard to get torque in that, com in that range with a camshaft. No, the... CDN or, or yeah, CDN SRT4 
your you can add a pro charger to that cam. The the concern about boost blowing out the exhaust is not that's not going to happen. Kentucky Speed, you can send me an ISKI 227-236 cam. Uh, we've run lots of cams like that, so we I kind of know. I appreciate the offer, but I, we've run lots of 227 cams, so we kind of know what they're going to do. And there's not going to be something that's – what would happen is if I ran that cam against another 227 cam I have, it's just going to take a lot of time to do the cam swap. Then it's going to make about the same power because that's what they do. That's what was so frustrating about doing that sloppy stage two. And that's why I haven't gotten back, back down to do the turbo version of that. Cause all I did was swap a whole bunch of cams and make the same power curve on that 4.8 liter. And it was, you know, after 10 or 15 cams or whatever it was, you, you just get tired of seeing the same power curve. The only ones that were really different were obviously the stock one. And then the LS nine cam was different than the other ones. Larry, it sounds like you need to, is that a carburetor that you're trying to adjust or is it a, on your 420, it sounds like it's a carburetor problem or an EFI problem, a tune problem. If you can't get it to, you need the, uh, you need Brule, the carb whisperer. He can adjust that thing up for you. Is a tighter LSA cam going to leak boost out the exhaust? <laughs> okay, Charles, think about this. On one side, you have turbo boost. On the other side, you have back pressure almost always the back pressure is higher than the boost pressure. So the boost cannot leak out the exhaust. If anything, if anything were to happen and it doesn't happen very, it's not really a thing, but if anything happened, the higher back pressure would leak back in through and go up to the boost. So let's get past the boost is leaking out the exhaust. Cause that really doesn't happen. If that were going to happen, it would be much more prevalent on a supercharged combination where you have boost on one side and you don't have anything on the other side, then all that boost can leak out, right? <laughs> yeah, except that doesn't happen. Jorian, is there a difference on a turbo cam and a stage four cam? I, I don't know. You, you have to be more specific about the cams that you want to compare. Um, a t there's one, there's different stages of turbo cams. There's all manner of different turbo cams. And there's all manner of different stage four cams, stage four NA cam, stage four turbo cam, stage four blower cam, stage four truck cam, you know, all kinds of stuff. Josh wants to know are the 243 hits better than the 706? Not on a 5.3 or a 4.8. On a, there's an argument to be made that they're better on a six liter, although they made less power than the 706 up to 5,000 RPM. But at the very top, they were like 12 to 15 or so, maybe better than the 706 because on a cammed six liter, now that combination can actually, it has two things. It can actually take advantage of the extra airflow that a 243 head has, um, especially at the higher lift ranges because we put a camshaft in that was big enough to take advantage of the extra airflow that comes at the higher lift on a 243. And it has a bigger bore, so it can utilize the chamber size that was actually designed for a bigger bore on the 243 head. So not on a 5.3, but yeah, kind of on a 6 liter. Sinister Silverado, I picked up a cheap PT Cruiser for my girlfriend. What mod should I do? Well, is that if that's the turbo four-cylinder, then obviously you got to turn up the boost. On an odd fire V6, like the 200 or 229, is 300 doable? Now, is that a, um, you have to tell me, is that a 2.8? Is that a 3.1? Are those the ones that you're talking about? And if so, yes, with a with boost, you can do that. And I want to actually go to the rec yard. I wish there, we had an easy way to hook those up because I'd like to go get those at the rec yard. And I just like to do no touch big bangs on those. <laughs> just just run them and, and put a turbo on them and then just run all of the boost on it because it'd be something I wouldn't even care about. And there's no aftermarket support for them. So it'd be fun just to run lots and lots of boost with the 85 and, you know, an air to water intercooler and stuff. What's a good way to pick up some bottom end with my Texas Speed Cam 5.3? It depends on how big your camshaft is. You can put a smaller camshaft in it, put a stock one in it. You can change the displacement of the 5.3. Long tube headers help. Compression helps.
Bob wants to know when's a push rod and trunnion upgrade needed on an LS. Um, I, I don't ever, I've never put a trunnion upgrade on anything that I've ever run, but again, I do stuff on the dyno and it's not longevity and that's when trunnion upgrades are needed. And I think a trunnion upgrade is probably necessary more on a two or 300,000 mile, you know, truck four, eight or five, three or six. Oh, than it would be on a new motor, even if you did a spring upgrade and stuff. But it's probably not a bad idea for a real high mileage motor. The other thing I would look at when you're doing a trunnion upgrade is take a look at the rockers, um, flip them over, and you could look at the pad, the wiping pad that goes on the valve, but also look at the, the push rod cup. That seems to me is the thing that wears out on these. And guys need to look at that and, and, and see, because that can cause... Um, that obviously causes lash if it gets really excessive, but you wouldn't want it to, and it, after it wears through, you know, you'll see it, it's really, really shiny and stuff. So then you might think about replacing the rockers or <laughs> go when you go to the wrecking yard, you know, go through a couple of the motors, get good sets where all of them are good and then put them on your motor and make sure that you get a, a good one where all the injectors are in good shape or all of the rockers are in good shape. Jeremy, uh, big block Chevy question. I have 077 heads. Any thoughts on max compression with pump gas and solid flat tap at cam? Um, no, it, an 077 head is an is an iron rec port head, right? Is that if I'm if I'm seeing if I'm if I'm remembering that right? Um, you're gonna have some, you know, you're gonna have some detonation issues, and you're gonna have to be. I'm sure this is a distributor, so you're probably gonna have to play with the advance curve on that thing um, if you're running it on pump gas. But, you know, I, I think we run um, 10 to 1 stuff uh, without any problem. And if, with a big camshaft, you can go with more static compression than that. Big John has a 408 with ported 821 heads and a 219, 233 cam and a 113. That's a pretty small cam for a 408, especially with an 823 head. That motor can make a lot of power and it would like more camshaft than that. It would like a 231, 247 kind of thing. Evil LS, 11 and a half to one, 6.2. Uh, can I turbo it or do I need to lower the compression? We run turbos on stock LS3 stuff. The being able to run it on a high compression thing is usually a function of intercooler and octane, obviously, and boost. And so if you have enough of all of those, you can get away with that. Um, it gets harder to do on pump gas because then you 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 have to take all the timing out of it. You got to make sure that you're you have um, offsets for uh, charge temperature and stuff, and you know you have to have put the safety features in there. McNeil Motorsport, what was your mid mid range timing on your Big Bang motors when the engine has some of its peak torques? Here's to pulling some timing in that mid range would last longer and less be less hard on the engine. Uh, yes, I'm sure you know if you have a shop that if you're running a turbo motor the, or, or, or any motor, let's let's take about the timing requirements on an NA motor. The timing that you have at the power peak is different than the timing that you have at the torque peak, and also different than the timing that you have at wide open throttle at let's say 2,000 RPM because below the torque at the torque peak and below the torque peak you want less timing. So if we have 29 degrees NA on our normally aspirated LS1, we might only have 24, 25 um, at the torque peak and we'll have less below that. Uh, and the reason that we do that is because it just doesn't make any power. Now, when we're running out on the engine dyno, our motor is cold, it's an ideal situation, it's not under the hood, it's not lugging a big car around and stuff. So we can, you know, we can get fairly aggressive with the timing to make the most power. I don't know that you can do that in the car. Normally when they run them on the chassis dyno, when Eric and those guys tune those on the chassis dyno, they run less timing than we do on the engine dyno. Again, because we're running them at 140 degrees and they're just not that cold uh, when they're running on the chassis dyno. So the same thing with the turbo, if you're whatever, it, depending on how the curve is and how the torque curve is or how the boost curve is and the torque curve on your turbo motor, um, even if we have, let's say 18 or 20 degrees at the power peak, we have less at the torque peak and then less even lower than that. The thing that's nice about the Big Bang motor is that we didn't have a lot of boost down, down low. So we didn't, we didn't have boost until 4,000 or 4,500 or something, I think, on the, on the 4.8 and the 5.3. On the 6.0, I think, it, I think that the turbos came up a little bit harder, although those turbos were bigger on the 6 liter 
than they were than the small CX racing turbos that we used on the 4.8 and the 5.3. Okay. Christian, can we get a big bang on a, <laughs> a 2U ZFE? Yeah. Everybody wants the Toyota V8s. I, I would like to. I If you can tell me what the thing makes NA, I can tell you how much power it makes at 14.7 pounds of boost. We don't even have to run one. I can even draw you a curve if you want. But I would like to run one because I'd like to run every V8. I'd like to run a, you know, a, uh, a Nissan, uh, a, what are they, a 5.6? And I'd like to run the Toyota version too. I'd like to run all those. It would be cool. Young wants to know, is it possible to run twin turbos and nitrous? Yes, you can run nitrous on anything, but you have to decide if you need to. Um, some guys use nitrous to spool the turbos if they're really big. If you have, and, and since like on that six liter, we made 1500 horsepower with that thing, which is getting near, sure, I'm sure near the limit of something in that motor. So if you can already do that, do you really need nitrous? Um, you're, you're not gonna add anything if you can already make more than the motor can stand. All you're going to do is probably hurt something. What is the NA93 power limit? I, I can't answer that question. I don't, I don't know what that is. It depends on a lot of things. Uh, 93 octane is um, better than we have in California. We only have 91 and we can run, you know, you can, you can run all the timing that you need. You can, and this is a 5.7 LS1. So if you put heads and cam and the right heads cam and intake on a, on a 5.7, you should be able to make good power. Yes, a 409 with boost would be cool because a 409 anything would be cool. I, I just like the way they look. Those W motors are really cool. I would like to build one. I never have. I, I don't know that I'm not sure I've ever even seen one up close. Is 15 degrees of overlap too much for a daily driver? You got to give me a lot more information than that. Just tell me what the cam is. Okay, we've got about three minutes and I got to get going. I have not tested direct port water meth injection. I should though, it, it, I think it would work. What are your thoughts on an LS7 cam and a single turbo LQ4 with LS3 heads? Well, I, you can look at the test I have up on the, I have a video on all the stock cams. The LS7 cam is basically identical in power to an LS9 cam. So it makes more power at the top. It's a little softer in the middle. It will work with the turbo LQ4. It's not the cam I would pick for a turbo combination because it is softer in the middle, so it's not gonna spool as well. And the LS3 heads tend to be softer down low than a cathedral port head. So again, you're, you're looking at it maybe a little bit of a spool issue, but an LQ4 is a big motor, and if you size the turbo right, um, it should work out just fine. Uh, a hot mess. I don't know of anybody I can recommend for a chassis dyno in Ohio. I'm not, I'm, that's not my area, unfortunately. <laughs> Team Shinoda, have I seen what YouTuber Cletus has done? We're all pretty familiar with Cletus. <laughs> Justin wants to know, would a Crower cam 234-240, work well for a nine, to, nine and a half to compression 351 Windsor with RHS 200 iron heads? Yeah, that will work fine. The heads are kind of limiting you there, but that's the that camshaft will work good. Let's see. Yeah. 
Nick wants to know, have you done Explorer 5 liter builds with the GT40 P heads? Um, yeah, my buddy Mark Sanchez has uh, a GT40 from the wrecking yard. His has the regular GT40 heads because in, in different years of the Explorer, they had the standard GT40 uh, heads and then they had also the GT40 P heads. His had the standard head. So we've done some uh, buildups with that and, and they work okay. You can take a look at the five liter Ford uh, cylinder head test that I did. And I tested the P heads and the, the standard GT40 heads, the aluminum ones and basically everything. So th they're a decent head. They're a good upgrade for the E7TE, but they're not a, they're not a equivalent of a, a trick flow twisted wedge head or an AFR or anything like that. So there's maybe you could port those and make them better. But um, I haven't seen or tested any of the ported versions. On a six liter, Matthew wants to know what lift and duration does re reliability become an issue? The, I don't think you need to worry about relia re reliability so much, Matthew, as you do about drivability. Pick a camshaft that's going to do the things that you want to drive around. If you pick something that has a, a tight LSA and, and has a lot of duration, uh, lift is not going to play as much of a part in that but it's gonna not drive around very well. It's gonna idle bad. It's not gonna have good part throttle response. It's gonna need a bigger stall speed. So if you want something that, you gotta pick a mild cam if you want something that's gonna work with a stock stall speed and, and still gonna give you all of the stock stuff that you like, just you want more power. At some point you have to <laughs> decide, okay, I'm willing to trade this amount of the other stuff to get like the, the power because you're definitely gonna have to trade something. You could put a mild stage one cam or that torque cam or something like that in and trade almost nothing and just get extra power. But if you want to go beyond that, then you'll have to start trading stuff. Yes, I am blanks. Uh, BTR stage three turbo cam is good for an 80 millimeter gen for six liter. Andres wants to know what my big, my favorite big power wild cam for a 5.7 LS1. I, I don't build motors. Um, all I do is test stuff. So I don't know uh, what it is you're trying to do, what your short block is, how much piston to valve clearance you have, what application this is, what transmission it is, how much power you're trying to make, where you're trying to make it. Is it carbureted? Is it injected? All of that stuff would come into play if you're talking about doing a max effort kind of thing, you're just gonna, if it's a stock bottom end, then you're gonna have to look at whatever the available piston to valve clearance is. And there are some guys that go in and notch the factory valves just so they can put more piston in it um, and tighten up the LSA so that they can get more power, get more average power production. And that works pretty good. There's guys that have made big power on those, but it takes a fair bit of work. How do, how do Coyote engines run high compression on boost? Uh, you can do that. Uh, they can do it with a four valve head makes that a little bit easier because they're um, the, if you have a spark plug on one side, um, there's more chance of detonation <laughs> than having it in the center. Um, and they have fairly good knock control on those things. And most guys run that do run boost on them. They all run them on E85 or, or some kind of race gas. So that obviously helps with the high compression too. Would uh, Charles wants to know what a 111 LSA on a 212, 218 bring torque in sooner than a 114? Yes, I think it definitely would. It will change the idle quality also, but as you tighten the LSA up, it should help torque production down low. R32 uh, on a 5.7 LS1 with 241 heads, 9 to 1 compression, GT, um, a G42 1450 Garrett turbo. I'm not really sure what that is, but it, okay, we'll assume it's a turbo. Would the stock inlet manifold become a restriction? I think you're, if you're talking about the intake manifold, the intake manifold is not going to be a restriction. The turbo is just going to multiply the power output of whatever's there. The intake manifold is going to kind of determine where it's going to make power but you're not going to restrict that thing with the intake manifold until you get really, really high up in power. T 
Tom wants to know, do you still have a five liter engine in your Mustang? Right now there's no engine in my Mustang, unfortunately. I took it out early on when I started, first started doing the stuff with West Tech uh, to do all of my five liter dyno testing. Uh, Daryl, I don't have another cam recommendation for that L29, that Gen 6 454. Um, there should be though. I'd, I'd like there to be a better cam and spring combination that somebody should put together for that. Cause I think that there's, I think that there's room there for improvement. A Toyota 22R, big, big bang for more power. I like the 22Rs. I, I like the little Toyota motors. Okay, guys, I got to get going. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for all the questions. That all worked out good. I'm going to go back and I just got to finish up one or two more things on the editing for the comparison between the 5.4 four valve twin turbo and the 5.3 LS twin turbo. But I will be back again tomorrow night with more questions and more answers. <laughs>